During the aftermath of more tragic violence in the United States, President Trump cites video games as a cause. We put that claim to test to see if this is just more scapegoating or if a connection has truly been made that should give us alarm. Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Hey, yo, can you do me a huge favor before we get into this one? Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up, because I'm not too proud to ask. All right, so here's the deal, y'all. Um, Tragically, we've had two more mass shootings in the United States. Um, They've happened, like, within a 17 hour period, I believe, in two totally different states. One in Ohio, the other one in um, Texas. Um, the, the culmination of those two tragedies led to 29, at least 29 more dead, many more wounded. In response to this government officials and their constant partisan bickering are looking for scapegoats. And the typical scapegoats you know are video games. And they resurface as officials, which now even include the U.S. President Donald Trump, are being blamed for these tragedies. And I feel erroneously, but I'll get into that. Now, even though I've seen this before, because I've been gaming for 30 plus years, I've seen this in the early 90s, right? But back in the early 90s, you had a lot of gang violence, a lot of gun violence. I mean, things were just out of control. And what happened was you had people that just ran to their, and I hate to use this word because now it's become the talking point term of certain fanboys, but you had people that ran to their fear mongering flag, right? Out of fear. They didn't have the resources that are out there now for people to research and better understand things. They just, they just flocked to their fear mongering flag and said, oh, you're to blame. That's the blame. That's the blame. You know what I'm saying? Because again, things were in hysteria at that time, right? But even since back then, you've had people try to blame video games for an increase in violence. Now, more recently though, the more prevalent actions are one, one of Representative Yi, all right? Representative Leland Yi out of California tried this over the hot coffee hack that happened in Grand Theft Auto 3. Now, for those of you that don't know who Representative Lee is, he is, he was a state senator out of California again, and he was a big anti-violent or raunchy video game content uh, political uh, official, right? He was real big against that. He tried censoring video games big time and it got to the point to where he even sued the state of California while uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was the government over that to, to try to force some legislation to heavily regulate video games. And if you don't know what the hot coffee hack was, it was a hack within Grand Theft Auto 3 that allowed the uh, protagonist to simulate sex acts with one of the NPCs in the game, okay? Now, Repres Representative Lee Ling Yi's attempts eventually lost, but more importantly to remember is that his efforts had a huge groundswell of support from big name Democratic uh, senators and, and, and officials in other states and fed at the federal level, all that stuff, right? So this wasn't something that he was just crusading on by himself. He had a lot of democratic support. And I want you to remember that because that's gonna be prevalent in the end of this video when I show you guys something, right? But more importantly, even though he lost, even with that groundswell of support, even though the fear mongering was at its height again with his hot coffee hack, even though his attempts lost, that's not the biggest thing. The biggest thing is if you fast forward a few years after all this, Representative Leland Yi was found guilty of gun trafficking and other charges <laughs> in 2016, and he was sentenced to five years on those charges. My man was the real life Grand Theft Auto. You know what I'm saying? So again, these attempts are, I don't think are rooted in any found belief that video games are doing this. 
These are just talking points. These are just access to lobbying groups. These are just political points that people are using. And they do this to defecate the names of the fallen, the names of the victim. It's sickening. But unfortunately, that wasn't the, the, the last time that somebody tried this. Even more recently, even before this attempt right now, Trump in the White House tried this last year. What they did after the on the heels of the aftermath of another shooting is they brought in all this media, they brought in all these legislators, and they tried to do this big and uh, big dog and pony show over violent video games. And they put together this montage of the most violent clips I guess their people can find. The problem is, is that I think the people advising Trump on this or of the old fogey generation and the old fogey generation what they always do is they always try to find the medium or the type of media that the quote unquote young kids like to to showcase the ending of the world this has happened since the the 50s with rock and roll right this is just a this is an all and even before that this is an ongoing event all right the problem is is that video games as a hobby is no longer considered or can be properly considered a young person's thing the average age of a gamer is in their 30s now a lot of you gamers hearing that yourselves is like wow i didn't know that but it's the truth look it up and i bet you if you don't know it that the old fogies at the white house or the old fogies advising the white house don't know it i mean think about it you don't hear people saying, oh, that Martin Scorsese, that heat. You know what I'm saying? And all them other movies, the violent movies, casino and all that other stuff. You know, Goodfellas, we got to put an end to that. No, because the old fogies like that stuff. So they erroneously think that they can attach violence to the young kids thing, but it's not a young kids thing. So that attempt of them bringing that media there to the White House fell flat because of that. But what made it even worse is they uploaded the video afterwards to YouTube and after uploading the video it got ridiculed the comment section was hilarious it got so bad that the White House had to take it down or hide it I can't remember which one they did I think they just hit it so here's my thoughts all together first to that whole ESA link I mean not to the ESA link to, to, the, to the event that I just spoke about um, with the uh violent video game clip uh, montage the ESA was there and they brought the ESA there and if, for those of you that don't know who the ESA is the ESA is the lobbying wing for video games it's just that the ESA ain't as powerful as these other lobbying wings right but you 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 can change that by you know you can go to the ESA the electronic software association site right now and you can donate to help make them a strong a stronger wing to help combat some of this foolishness but even with their limited resources the ESA was able to properly showcase and highlight that back since way back when in the in the early 90s Remember when I said that everybody was in hysteria over the violence that was happening and they were trying to blame video games as the cause of this violence? Since that time, when till now, when video games have skyrocketed in popularity, youth violence has actually decreased drastically during that same period. So that kills that whole theory that violent video games is at the root of violence. Because if that was the case, then violence would be increasing, particularly with the youth, instead of decreasing, right? Right. <laughs> In addition to that, just look at the global impact. You have the same quote unquote violent or raunchy video games being spread all over the world and retail in many other countries, these same video games. And you see nowhere near the levels of violence. In these same countries, that you see in the US, right? <laughs> Nowhere near it. As a matter of fact, there are certain games that come from Japan that have a certain level of raunchiness to them that by the time they hit the United States, we have to censor them. We turn, we tune them down. And the level of violence that is in Japan or reported in Japan 
is highly dwarfed, seriously dwarfed by that in the United States. Look that up too. See, this is just a farce. This is all a joke. But what makes this disgusting is that our government officials want to do this in the light of people actually dying. People lost family members. People are going to be traumatized for life over this. They're doing this simply for political points. Instead of trying to get to the root of the problem, working across the aisle and solving this stuff. But there is a way, there are certain people out here that have a power to stop this. Because we have some ignorant people that just don't know any damn better that are in charge of the state of affairs, whether it's the White House or at the local level or anywhere. They're just ignorant to this stuff. And, but people can help them. Let me show you an example of someone that may have not been aware of something, but then came across with the right approach that can help with this situation if they really want to. So take a look at this. I found this very interesting, but I remember when it happened because I was around that time reporting the, the whole situation with Representative Yee. So again, Representative Yee was highly against uh, certain raunchy or violent content in games. He tried to pass that uh, legislation to, to, to heavily regulate games, and then he even went to court over it. While all this was happening, a 21-year-old gamer called in to the infamous and controversial Rush Limbaugh show. Now, I don't say that to say that I, I'm against Rush or I'm for him. I hold no political limits. I don't play those games, but I'm not. That, that's a different podcast. I'm not going to get into that. However, the caller live on air made Rush aware of what was going on. And Rush had this to say in response to that. Rush said, said this, and I'm going to highlight this for you guys that are watching this. I've been concerned about the reimposition of the fairness doctrine, and I'm glad this is happening. If it takes an impingement on free speech and something you're interested in, video games, to alert you to what's happening throughout society, then I'm glad it's happening because I'm sure you oppose this. Caller says yes. Rustin responds, your video game is your video game. And you don't think the government should have any role whatsoever in applying an artistic sanction on it, on it or any stamp of approval. You can say that, but you can't say that because that's not permitted. The market should determine this, correct? Caller says yes. Rushton responds, if you want to buy something raunchy in a video game, you should be allowed to. And it's too raunchy to the market. They won't support it fine it dies if the market likes it then we got a cultural problem to deal with but the government ought to have nothing nothing to do with it correct you agree caller says yes so here's the point i'm trying to make okay that again our political system has become so toxic that you can have somebody like rush limbaugh so somebody that people say is so divisive and all this other stuff be so spot on about this who has a pipeline to the president of the United States and the people that are, you know, helping him with the legislation or the things that he says. He has a pipeline to the president. He can speak out and say, whoa, 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 Mr. President. As a First Amendment person, did I say that I am? I'm, I'm all about free speech. You need to stop this. I get that you're getting heat about this, but you have to find another way, Sway. This ain't it. But... To the time of this recording, as of the time of this recording, I've heard nothing from Rush. And this is why I say our politics is so disgusting. Because Representative Yee had a D on his arm, you know what I'm saying? Let's speak out about it. But President Trump, who has an R on his arm, like Rush, we, we nothing, it's nothing but crickets. I want to say this, y'all. I don't hold no political litmus. Like I told my fellow Democrat people, and when I say fellow, I don't, I'm not a Democrat. I, I hold no political litmus. Like I told my fellow Democrat people, when y'all were trying to support Representative Yee with this foolishness, I'm telling y'all that wear that arm on your arm and support of Trump and have the same beliefs as, as, as Rush Limbaugh. Y'all need to have a goddamn spine if you're a gamer. Stop ignoring this. 
Stop being tip top warriors for a politician on social media all day, but not paying any attention to have anything to say about this. Tell the leaders of the party that you support to stop when they're out of line. This is about the dead. This is about to stop a tragedy that's on the incline, right? And this is about working together as a nation, as humans, to come to a better result. This is no time to try to score political points or find scapegoats so this thing only gets worse. Democrats had the power to stop this back in 2010. People that wear the R in your arm, y'all got the power to try to stop this now. Speak to your officials, tell them they know better. And if they don't know better, show them better. The proof is in the pudding. And lastly, where the homie Rush Limbaugh at? You got a pipeline to the president? Say something. Say something. Because if you don't, we got to question your integrity. Period. And that's it from your boy, MM2K. Hey, yo, let me know what you think about what I have to say in the comment section below. Because like I always tell you, come with me or come at me, it does not matter to your boy. With that being said, if you did like what I had to say, you can catch me on the corner every boulevard. Check out the links below to follow me. Hey, y'all do a show with your peoples. They're Griggity, Snow Bunny, Nethos is called Scram Punks. We're doing on PNTS Network. Check us out there. Check out my brother and the broadband bullies. Check out the gear, the Patreon link, the Discord link, because it's fly. Check your boy out on the Hard Knock Digital Culture channel, twitch.tv forward slash Mighty Most 2000, where we're highlighting hardcore content that, again, is at risk because of foolishness like this. And with that being said, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day, despite all this foolishness. Peace.